Excellent. Cool. Yes. Hello, everyone. We got one more minute until the 4.30 p.m. start. It's good. I got my browser open. I will need this for today. Okay, the bitrate is looking good. Um, apparently, there's news uh, if you have Mac OS right now. Uh, it's taking literally like seconds to even minutes to start apps uh, up and running. And that's certainly happening on, on my end right now as well. So I have a little bit of concern today about using Mac OS. And, um, yeah, I've been hearing that news on social media. Hey, we are on. Yep, we are on. Hello, everyone. Yes, welcome. And uh, what we're going to do today, um, last week, we went over... Uh, code samples, code samples that had vulnerabilities in them. So I'm going to bring up my terminal. I'm going to log into my Kali machine where I have all the, all the code. cd -vong. And here we go. Here is the list of vulnerable source code that I had. Uh, I did rename the Java file to be a proper class name which to, to be the file as well. So I presented last week a vulnerable uh, Java code, vulnerable C code, and also vulnerable JavaScript code written in Node.js. So just a little quick quick review. Quite a bit more vuln.c. And this was a deliberately vulnerable uh, piece of source code written in C. And as you can see, um, there is stir copy being used. One of the biggest problems with C is that there's no balance checking with a lot of uh, traditional functions, which are called the dirtiest of the dirtiest in C. Yeah, so we have a stir copy problem here. Okay, so if I do take a look at the... J, the JavaScript code. Uh, this uses no, just a server side JavaScript. Uh, there was an eval being used. Okay. And what about the Java example? Twitter test.java. Well, you have a hard coded username and password. There is uh, SQL injection because args uh, is not sanitized. So these were the vulnerabilities that we pointed out in the source code examples last week. The reason why I presented uh, these three examples is because of today. So last week, we showed vulnerable source code. Today, we're going to talk about static analysis. And also a little bit about dynamic analysis as well, too. So what static analysis is, think of code review. Think of code scanning, but it, static analysis will look at code or binary uh, for vulnerabilities. Um, and also a lot of like functional stylistic issues as well. Uh, static analysis will look at your source code without, will look at your source code or your binary without running the program. That's the key. The key about static analysis is uh, looking at your source code or your binary, no execution of the program at all. So this has a lot of pros and also a lot of notable cons, weaknesses as well. The pros of static analysis is it's going to have 100% code coverage. Uh, it's going to look at every line of code um, with or without the source code. Um, you can do binary static analysis as well, too. So static analysis will give you 100% code coverage. So it's going to look at every single line of code. Okay. Uh, it can easily pinpoint uh, glaring issues such as the use of vulnerable functions um, and uh, things maybe even like hard-coded passwords uh, right off the bat. 
So that's what static analysis can do. So it's an extremely valuable tool for uh, developers, software engineers, um, extremely valuable. The problem with static analysis is it can give lots and lots and lots of results, lots of false positives, and also a lot of stuff that you quite care you don't, you, you wouldn't want to care about. Um, that's a big issue with static analysis. Uh, also, if static analysis software as uh, tools, they all work and act differently as well. Uh, there's no standard across the board. Some are better than others. Okay, so what are some static analysis tools out there? Uh, there's been a lot of static analysis, a plethora of them out there. Um, one of the age-old tools is called Lint. Uh, it's called Lint. And there's a Lint static analysis tool written for almost every single programming language now. Uh, C, certainly C, C++, JavaScript, which I will illustrate later on, um, PyLint for Python, you name it. Now, there's lots and lots of static analysis tools out there, but again, the big the, the thing is, is that they all act and behave a little bit differently. You may be wondering, why do we care? So, what's the point? Why is static analysis so important? Like, why do we care? Well, there's two things that come to mind about static analysis, I can tell you. Uh, number one, so far we've been finding vulnerabilities. We've been doing cross-site scripting, SQL injection. Uh, we've been doing, like, pen testing. Uh, students in my security class have even played the Capture Flags game. So, they've been hammering away... Um, looking for vulnerabilities uh, manually. Uh, we haven't even touched code. We haven't done any code review. We haven't touched code or analyzed code or analyzed binaries at all. We haven't done that. So now issue number one is we can use static analysis tool to automatically find glaring, glaring issues for us, uh, given either A, source code, or B, a binary. Number two, static analysis um, will be, it's, uh, it's used for the next topic, uh, heavily. Uh, static analysis is also used heavily for malware analysis as well. So those are the two important reasons why static analysis is so important. Um, one, uh, automated code analysis or binary analysis and transition to the final topic of this. Well, really, probably the last big topic of this course is going to be malware analysis. There's also a third reason. Um, which I forget, which I keep on forgetting, and it is now integrated in uh, things like GitHub and GitLab. Okay, so let's get started and let's do some hands-on demonstration on static analysis tools out there. So I'm going to open up my browser now, and there is a static analysis tool, one of them, it's called uh, Infer. Uh, Infer uh, is written by Facebook, and this is a tool to detect bugs in Java and C, C++, Objective C before chip, uh, free and open source. Uh, just one warning about Infer, it does take a long time. It can take a long, long time to install. So Infer is a static analysis tool. If you give Infer some Java or C++, uh, C, C++, Objective C code, it will produce a list of potential bugs. Again, I will repeat, potential bugs. Anyone can use Infer to intercept critical bugs before they have shipped to users uh, and help prevent crashes or poor performance. So it's HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, fbinfer.com is the official website. Um, they have, it supports Android, Android and Java, C, C++, and IOF, Objective C. They even have a way to test out. There is a um, playground here to try and infer. Let's go to the documentation. Um, getting started. How you install infer on Mac OS using Homebrew. You can also have the installation instruction for Linux. Uh, you can even do a Docker container as well. Uh, again, the source code is on GitHub, free and open source, 
static analysis tool, static analysis, static code analysis, code quality, yada, 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 instruction getting started. So, uh, I actually have, um, I actually have uh, infer installed on my Kali Linux. So I'm going to clear my screen. Just a little friendly reminder of the source code examples that I have here. Uh, I have Twitter, test.java, vuln.c, vuln.js. Okay, and as we saw from the documentation, infer works on Java and C and C++. So we can, use, we can use infer on uh, the Java and the C example that we have here. Okay, so how do you want to use infer? Type infer. Okay. Uh, infer, nothing to compile. Have you run infer capture? Try cleaning build first. There was nothing analyzed. Okay. Can I do infer phone.c? Is that how it works? Nope. It does not. Unexpected anonymous argument. Uh, yeah, maybe I should just read the manual. Maybe I should just read the manual. Here's the usage instruction. Infer command options. Maybe I should do infer minus minus help. See how that works. Infer static analysis looks like a man page. Static analysis for Java and C and C++ objective C option. Infer capture. Infer analyze. Compile. Ooh. Infer is a static analyzer given a collection of source files written in Java or language in the C family and in the command to build them. Infer produces a list of potential issues. Okay. A whole list of different flags here, but let's say infer analyze and um, how about gcc phone.c? I think this is how you run it, is it? Nope, okay. Well. I keep on screwing up deliberately. This is where it's important to actually go back and read the manual. It just shows you here. Ah, look at this. And this video actually shows a pretty good example. So infer and then attach that. Ah, cool. Let's see that. Let's do infer dash dash. Java C Twitter test dot Java. I think this should work. Capturing and C and a, what? No issues found? Are you serious? What? Really? Okay. This is not. This is weird. Let's do infer uh, dash dash. GCC bone.c I see if there's anything really up. Really? No issues found? Are you serious? You can't be serious, right? I am following the instructions correctly. I mean, I just looked at this thing and, you know, I just looked at this thing. On the, uh, I just saw the instructions here. And it's not producing me any, look, yeah, it matches up. No issues found? Really? I swear I was following the instructions. Well, turns out this is quite normal. This is actually, this happens. Believe it or not, this stuff does happen. It's sad to believe, it's hard to believe, but it should be picking up obvious vulnerabilities, the static analysis tool, right? Well, What about, I want to show you this post. This gets interesting. Okay, there is another um, static analysis tool. Such as, it's called CPP check. And I can run that too in a few moments. Why are static analysis tools missing the seemingly obvious case? Like, really? What the hell? I have a very sad, simple C program with a potential buffer overflow using stir copy. Okay, here we go. Has a, uh, has a, here, here it is, it's glaring, no bounds checking and stir copy. Neither Clang Static Analyzer nor CPP check, um, 
Ooh, cool. I'm going to copy this can uh, find this as an issue. Am I just asking too much from my static analysis tools? And the answer is, uh, one response, I can't speak for the quality of your static analysis tool. Ah, here's a dynamic analysis tool, Checkpointer, from my company, I find problem with your code, which I tested as buggy.c, and yes, as you can see, it actually pointed it out. There you go. You even mentioned the CWE in this tool, CWE 119, improper restriction of operation within bounds of a memory, uh, of a memory buffer, and yeah, pointed that out. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go back for a second. Can we confirm this? I have CPP check installed on this, uh, on this too. Let me do CPP check, uh, enable warning style, bone.c. So CPP check is another static, is now the preferred uh, static analysis check, uh, static analysis tool for um, C++ and also C programs. Oh, okay, here we go. Portability, D in format string, requires int, but the number of size data, okay, print, okay, interesting. So it found one thing, but it didn't find the stir copy issue. Which is good, which is which aligned very well with the Stack Overflow post. Yeah, ship it. Yeah, basically, yeah, if you don't find anything, go ship it. And this is what well, practically what everyone does. But what you said, and what you said also raises a very interesting point about static analysis tool. Wait a minute, before I move any further, I, I don't want to talk too much about dynamic analysis today. Um, but what dynamic analysis is, is the opposite of static analysis in which it will analyze your program while it is running. I repeat, dynamic analysis tools will actually check and, te and check your program for vulnerabilities and other issues while it is running. So during the run time, run time. So, static analysis, okay, no execution of binary, no execution of program, full 100% code coverage. On the other side, dynamic analysis, okay, runtime, check your program while it is running, but that also comes at a cost of there's not going to be 100% code coverage because, you know, it is very likely, highly, highly likely, uh, not every facet of the program or the application will be reached during the execution of the program. But that's the huge difference. Now, do people use dynamic analysis tools all the time? Uh, let me give you a good example. Uh, if you're at Tufts, uh, one of the nice things I'm exceptionally proud of over these years is I um, want to give a shout out at this point to Norman Ramsey. Um, and I remembered when he started the um, Bits, Bytes, and Pointer course, which is, um, I always forget the formal name of it. It's called um, Computer uh, Machine Structure and uh, Assembly Language. That's the formal name. But it goes by, also known as a more famous thing called COM40 at Tufts. And um, one of the things I, I really, really like, and I, I stole from him when I taught data structures a few years later, is um, if your program dumps core or have memory leaks, you got no credit for your program. I really, really like that. I really, really like that. So I want to say thank you, Norman, for not only for implementing that, but he also, implement, but he also um, introduced students to uh, the use of Valgrind. Uh, Valgrind. Valgrind, which I like to call Valgrind. <clears throat> Valgrind is an instrumentation framework for building dynamic analysis tool. So Valgrind tool can automatically detect memory management and threading bugs and profile your program in detail. Valgrind is a quintessential example of a dynamic analysis tool. Okay. And uh, this is now used in uh, our suite of introductory courses at Tufts, which I'm happy because we use C and C++. And getting students into the habit of not only like, you know, memory memory bugs are unacceptable, 
but also the idea of using a tool to profile your program uh, is exceptionally a valuable skill across the board. So I want to thank Norman for that. Um, you know, on that note, I always keep on wondering, like I graduated from Tufts in 2000 and 2002, and I always look back and I've always, I've always asked myself, how would my life be different if I had a professor like Norman um, or a course, a rigorous course like that? I think my life and career would have been very different. I think about that often. So, but going back, uh, dynamic analysis, again, checks your program, uh, uh, analyzes your program at runtime while it is running. But today we're going to focus on static analysis. Okay, when, you know, it's going to look at your source code or your binary, no execution at all, but I get 100% code coverage. Okay, so it's not happening. Like going back, we just did with CPP check. It's not finding anything. Okay, so we've used infer, we've used CPP check, nada, nothing so far. What about that JavaScript example? Okay, one of the quint if you're writing JavaScript, the quintessential tools, tools are either JS hint or JS lint. JS lint is a JavaScript code quality tool. And of course, the, 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 the Wikipedia entry is JS lint is a static code analysis tool used in software development for checking if JavaScript source code comes out with coding rules. Okay. So there's JS Lint, there's also JS Hint as well too. So let's use that. So to install, um, I install JS Lint by way of NPM, the No Package Manager. So I have own that JS here. What if I just run JS Lint Let's .js. see what happens. What's the output gonna be? Okay, we got a lot of stuff happening. Back up. Okay, here are your issues. Use base, not tab. Missing strict state. Okay. Use base is not. Okay. Use base is not. Okay. What the. Okay. I get a lot of. Okay. Use. Okay. I, I don't see anything with eval. New spaces. Okay, here, now, here we go. I found eval twice, but none of them, but none of the results, and neither one of them is telling me don't use eval. Or bad things will happen. Like, I'm seeing a lot of stuff here that I don't care about. I'm seeing a lot of information that I don't care about. Unused, re okay, this may be something that I care about, which is unused response. All right, I, I, yeah, but I, but it's, but the response is absolutely needed in the callback function. So what gives? Unexpected. Okay, so this is the problem with static analysis tools. A big problem and why a lot of people refrain from using static analysis tools is because it, one, gives out way too much information, way too much stuff, way too many results. And a lot of false positives or stuff that you don't care about. Like I only care about security issues, and it's printing, and it's giving me, and it's printing out a lot of stylistic problems for me. I, I want to know the security vulnerabilities with my source code, not these, not not all these stylistic issues. Okay, so I'm pointing this out is because not JS tools like Lint, traditional tools like Lint may or may not uncover glaring security vulnerabilities. Uh, it will print out a lot of stylistic issues, but you're going to get a lot of false positives. Okay? So, what now? What do I do now? All right. So, like, are we at a loss for hope in terms of uh using static analysis for uh, for security? And the answer is no. The point being is you got to use a good static analysis tool for security. There are a few of them out there. 
But the one I want to show you today is called Barricode. Okay, it's a commercial product. Barricode.com. Barricode, based in Burlington, Massachusetts. Barricode.com. Um... Veracode was founded by security luminaries uh, and friends uh, by Chris Weissopel uh, and Christian Ryu. Um, Chris uh, Well Pond, uh, Chris Weissopel, um, friend, mentor, um, helped found Veracode. And um, one of their, uh, you know, their. What can I say? I mean, I, I speak the world about them. Oh, that's Chris. So Chris was one of the Chris was one of the founders. Uh, he's now the chief technology officer. Want to give a huge shout out to friend and mentor Chris Weissopel, and also a thank you for giving me and Tufts access to Veracode Analysis Center since seven years, so 2013. And so, what we've done for seven years at Tufts, and namely my security and my senior capstone courses, have been integrating, I've integrated Veracode Analysis Center into both my security and uh, senior capstone courses. Okay, so one of their products is the static analysis tool. Veracode Static Analysis, write secure code at the speed of dead, dead ops. This is what I'm going to show today. Veracode Static Analysis provide fast automated security feedback in an IDE and pipeline and conduct full sort of policy scan before deployment. It can then provide clear guidance on what issues to focus on and how to fix them faster. There you go. Okay, so uh, Veracode Static Analysis provide, you know, does provide um, static analysis, security feedback, policy scanning, um, what the bugs are, where the bugs are, um, and also uh, severity as well. So I'm going to show you what we got. Uh, security feedback while coding. Uh, as developers are writing code, the IDE provide focused real-time security feedback and also help develop remediate um, faster and learning on the job positive. We got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go to analysis center .com. Oh, right. Uh huh. Okay. So I have to log in. I look talk me timed out. Hold on for a second. Let me, um, I'm going to take a quick time out here. I had to get my password. Okay. Okay, I am back. I'm going to log in. There we go. Let's go. Hello? 
Everything is acting up slowly today, but that's okay. Here we go. Here is what happens when you log into Veracode. Here you go. So here's my dashboard. So my dashboard currently has, I can start a scan. I can review scan results. I can analyze performance. Mm, okay. Yes. A lot of applications here. And so one of the things that I do in my security course after the, after the Capture the Flag game is I want the students to get into the habit of using st static analysis. So students found a whole bunch of vulnerabilities in the Capture the Flag game. But are there anything else in the Capture the Flag game that maybe not find? Is there anything else deeper? Now here's the catch. I give, I open, so I, I release the source code and also the database dumps to the entire class after the CTF, after the Capture the Flag game um, is over. And so what I want the students to do is to do a technical risk analysis. And a technical risk analysis um, is to highlight all, is to do a risk table of all the technical risk in the game, things that they found in the game, and also now that they have access to the source code in the database dump, uh, also what are the other issues now that they have access to the full source code. And so what students do is they, they go and upload the entire CTF game uh, to Veracode. So how do you upload an application? How do like, you know, Veracode can scan almost anything. They can scan almost anything. So I'll just give you a little quick walkthrough on how you do a scan. Here, uh, select an application. What kind of application do you want to scan? New application? Existing application already in system? Uh, well, let's do a new application. We're not going to fully create a brand new application. I'm going to hit OK. OK, and so to start a new scan, I'm not going to you know, go through this, but you fill out the application basic, the name of the application. Ah, here it is. This is important. The policy controls. The policy control for the application to find the target for security quality, uh, to find required scans, and set the required timeline for fixing or mitigating flaws. So you can choose a business criticality. It had a very high, high, medium, low, very low. That's the scale. recommended. They also have a mobile policy, PCI 3.21. 3, uh, Depending on what policy that uh, you select, the, the grading will be a little bit different. Okay, you're going to go to the application unit, business unit, owner email, visibility. Um, you can have many users on analysis center. Uh, you can assign roles to people as well, too. Like, you can assign the role of security leads to people. Team and security leads, yada, yada, yada. Once you hit save and continue, then that's where you can go and upload your, um, you can upload your, your software. Whether it's a full, like, a full zip code, a full zip file, compressed file of all the source code, or uh, even a compressed binary, like an IPA file for iOS app, APK for an Android app, uh, .exe, stuff like that. Okay, well, I'm not going to go and create a brand new application because once uh, once I upload it, it was good. once I upload it, then it's going to say, okay, you're going to get your result in a certain amount of time. That could range anywhere between like three minutes to three days to scan to do a uh, so for code to do a full scan of your app. But I can show you what we have done so far. Okay, let's start off with a couple from the from, from back in the day. I had a student, a uh, former student in 2017, uh, created, uh, I think this was for a first security final project. It was a Facebook uh, follower account bot. She wrote it in Python. I want to give a shout out to Toddy Doyle. So let's take a look at this application. Facebook follower counter bot. 
Static scan is ready. It was done in November, almost today. Wow, almost uh, three years ago. Uh, go to our Facebook follower account. Okay, so for this app that Tati wrote, Facebook follower counter bot, she used um, bear code recommended medium V1 as her policy. But here's the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty is the score of the app is a 74 out of 100. So if you're thinking academic grading for a 74 is like a C. Okay. Now, you can even see the activity log. It's been, been an old app. Let's go to view report. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So here is how a Veracode report looks like. Has an executive summary. This report summarizes security flaws identified in the application setting using manual penetration testing, automated static, and or automated dynamic security analysis techniques. Again, remember, static analysis, no execution of code or program, 100% code coverage. Dynamic analysis is going to be analyzing and analyzing your program while it is running. If you're trying to do a dynamic security analysis scan, dynamic analysis scan of a, let's say a web app uh, using Veracode, what it will do is it will, you need to provide a URL of like the starting entry point and then um, the app will be executed, uh, it will be just follow through, which will be useful for understanding the overall security quality of this application or for comparison between application. The static binary analysis engine models the binary executable into an intermediate representation of which is then verified for security flaws using automated security scans. Dynamic analysis, well, this is, well, okay. Dynamic analysis uses automated web scanning to detect security flaws at runtime. So everything that I've said for all this time, so I'm not a loon. Results are verified by a security technician to ensure the lowest false positive rates in the industry. Mm. The results in an accurate list of security flaws for the classes of automated scans apply. All right, let's cut to the chase. So what did Veracode find with the Facebook follower counter bot? Mm. Two very high uh, flaws, code injection, nothing high, whole bunch of medium, 75 medium issues. Uh, CRLF injection, cross-site scripting, cryptographic issues, directory traversal, uh, server configuration, and, well, nothing low. Mm. Okay. Wait a minute. Can I get deeper? Can I see where the code injection issues are? Issues are. Can I see where the cross-site scripting issues are, the cryptographic issues? You better believe it. So there's a policy control. Well, I'm not going to use that. Oh, policy control. That even shows me the stats. Did not pass a minimum Veracode level. Did not pass maximum. Certainly did not pass maximum severity. Uh, the score passed, barely. <laughs> Scan type, we only, uh, Toddy only chose static analysis, did not pass, but the findings and recommendations, here you go, let's go, here we go, very high, code injection, code injection, here's the description of code injection, code injection is the process of injecting untrusted input into an application that dynamically executes, dynamically evaluates and executes the input as code. Common examples of code injection include remote file include an eval injection uh -huh, eval injection into your application implemented in an interpreted language such as PHP. The recommendation is do not allow untrusted input to be evaluated or otherwise interpreted as code. It even specifies the CWE. Here we go. Improper neutralization of directive and dynamically evaluated. Uh, code, eval injection, CWE ID 95. So now you actually understand, I hope things are becoming a lot clearer of how and why I organize my security course the way it is. It went, it started a bunch of weeks, a number of weeks ago in October, we talked about vulnerabilities and vulnerability scanning, CWE versus CBEs. Okay, then we did web security. 
Now we're doing static and dynamic analysis. So in order to understand static and dynamic analysis, and as you can see here, you have to understand what vulnerabilities CWE and CVEs are. There you go. Effort to even show the effort to fix the description, the recommendation. Aha, and here is the key. Instances found uh, via static scan. The module is the source code or the package, the location, the name of the file, launcher.launch.py, and the line number. Exploitability likely. Let's look at the medium flaws. CLRF, description, again, associated flaws. This is actually the proof. Okay, debugger.js, 1A line number 118. Cross site scripting. Hello, Chris Eng. Cross site scripting attacks allow an attacker to use an application to send malicious code, generally a form of browser site script, and then you da da da. Here it is CWE ID 80, basic cross site scripting. Effort to fix, description, recommendation, and everywhere where cross-site scripting was found. Cryptographic issues. Quite a lot. <laughs> Even showed you the exploitability, unlikely. Directory traversal. CWE ID 73. Mm. Lots and lots of vulnerabilities. Selection of less secure algorithm that, that, that finds quite a lot of stuff. All right, this is good stuff. Good stuff. Let's go home. Let's look at another app. Let's look at the automated resume analysis. This was a senior capstone project from the 2019-2020 uh, academic semester. Ooh, we got a 99 uh, for the score, static score out of 100. That's saying pretty damn good. Let's go to the results. I had one cross site scripting issue. The remediation status. That's cool. Let's view the report. Find where the cross-site scripting issue was in this. It is medium cross-site scripting. We've seen that already. Here it is. Backend server app.py line number 34. This call contains cross-site scripting flaw. What doesn't do is what it does, what Verico doesn't do is that you will actually show you the actual proof. It doesn't do that. It just say exploitability likely, but it doesn't show you an, a proof that say there really, really, really is cross-site scripting uh, up to like, let's say, um, at, at this end point with the payload. It doesn't do that. So you are warned. Show you one more example. Let's talk about my capture the flag game. All right. So... What kind of vulnerabilities were in my capture to fly game? What's the score, by the way? Okay, this is a request incomplete. Let's look for a completed one. Let's look at this one. There. Oh my god! Oi! Oi vey! 52! Woo! Out of 100. That's like an F minus minus there. Take a look at the results. All right, this one uses a policy evaluation of Veracode recommended very high V1. Score of a 52, very high. Again, depending on policy, some vulnerabilities will be more important, will be of a higher, of be on a higher scale than others, depending on what policy you select. Woo! Very high, five, high issue 13, 673 medium issue. Ooh, 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 ooh. The top risks are cross-site scripting, cryptographical issues, code injection, command, or argument injection, and oh, we got SQL injection. Hello, hello. Oy vey. So let's view the report on this one. 
673 medium. Okay, so here's a very high issue. Code injection command or argument injection. High, code injection, SQL injection, a whole bunch of medium ones. Including credentials management. Oy vey. A lot of work to be done here. Findings and recommendations. Detailed uh, flaws by severity. Code injection. CWE ID 95. I found a DLL. Hell. Okay. That's news to me. Class PHP mailer. Mm. Oh, oh, here we go. We have PHP remote file inclusion. Admin.php, I think I wrote that. Yeah, likely. Update.php, WP-settings. Oh, so, uh, yeah, there, were, there, was, there was a WordPress uh, WordPress blog, a very old WordPress blog that was in the game. Hey, you got, here we go, SQL injection. SQL injection, what we got? When data enters an application from an untrusted source and it's used to dynamically construct a SQL query. Okay. Mm. Mm. CWE ID 89, SQL injection. Mm. Well, I wrote board.php, I wrote dblib.php, I wrote index.php, line 30, 50, C. yep. I omit the evil deed. Lots of SQL injection there. Code injection. Oh, here's a, oh, 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 hey, oh, hey. Okay, this ain't good. I have credential management. One variation, okay, improper credential, uh, improper management credentials such as usernames and password may compromise system security. In particular, strong passwords and plain text or hard coding password directly into the application code are design issues that cannot be easily remediated. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, this is like a fire alarm fire here. And yes, it did. Barricode static analysis found hard-coded passwords, CVEID 259. There you go. Here's all the instances of hard-coded passwords. While well, the traditional static analysis tools that we use, like Infer, Lint, CPP Check, did not find the hard-coded passwords and other security issues. Vancouver Static Analysis Engine did. There's quite a lot of hard-coded passwords. Uh, username and password credential. There's still quite a lot of uh, hard-coded credentials everywhere. Not good. Cross-site scripting. The files. Mm. Lots of vulnerabilities. Lots of vulnerabilities. But let's see now. This is, uh, this is for the CTF game. And I have students actually uploading their own version of CTF game. What was this one? CTF Comp 116, that's my security course. CTF Fall 2020. All right, got a 50, 53 as well. What about this report? Are we going to get consistent results? Yeah, pretty consistent. 670, cross-site scripting, cryptographical issues, command, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. What about this seat? Yeah, let's go for this. Oh, module selection. This one was complete. What about the CTFZ one? Do we got anything here? Yeah, it also got a 53 as well. Oh, got a result. Pretty consistent. Found everything. Yeah. There another instance there. Are we getting cons consistent results across the board? So far it's a 53 out of 100, which is almost like an F minus. Yeah, let's just see this one. Let me check this one yet. Are we getting consistent results? Yep, this was a 53 as well, too. Get the activity log. Not good. Not good. Let's go to the results of this one. So I got three different submissions for the same kind of binary 
I didn't double check about the policy recommendation. I think they're all a little bit off, but that's okay. But we're consistently seeing score of a 53, the top risk, pretty consistent. Open floor severities, also pretty consistent as well too. This ain't good. Not good. Yeah. This CTF game had lots of vulnerabilities. So Verico found out a lot of difference. They found out a lot. Found out a lot of problems. I'm going to log out of here. I'm going to log out. So one final thing is, you know, you may be wondering, like, you know, why is static analysis tool so important? And I mentioned earlier, um, you know, it can automatically find glaring security issues if you use a good static analysis tool. But also, uh, static analysis tools are very, very important for um, malware analysis, which we'll start to cover, which we'll talk, we'll talk about next week. But one more thing as well, too. Um, static analysis tools are now baked into platforms such as uh, GitHub. So this was last month by GitHub from the good folks of GitHub. Uh, October 5th, 2020, announcing third-party code scanning tool, static analysis, and developer security training. Hmm. Last week, we launched code scanning. Oh, I want to open up, open this article up in a separate tab. Uh, last week, we launched code scanning for all open source and enterprise developers, and we share more extensive data. Today, we are happy to introduce 10 new third-party tools available with GitHub code scanning. These open source projects and static uh, application security testing. Static application security testing, SAST solution, bring a wide variety of additional security tools directly into the developer workflow, ensuring the vulnerability can be identified and fixed before they are committed to the code base. You can enable these additional capabilities on your public repository today. Again, why I'm talking about static analysis today, it also ties in very nicely with vulnerabilities, which we covered a few you know, last month. Code scanning is developer first, yada, yada, yada. There are other uh, third-party code scanning tools available, static analysis, developer training, check marks, Codacity, Codacity, Codacity? Code scan, defense code, thunder scan, fortify, muse, secure code warrior, shift left, synopsis, intelligent uh, uh, security scan. Oh, I you uh, said kind of a couple friends there. I want to give a shout out to the good folks at Synopsis. Yeah, they did an interview with me a, uh, a year ago. That was a, yeah, a real good interview with them. Like you know, in terms of interview being a. Uh, uh, for a blog, uh, been very supportive of me all the uh, for all this time. Of course, they had um, synopsis um, uh, bought out Sigital, uh, Gary McGraw's, uh, uh, which Gary McGraw was CTO there, and of course Veracode. Uh, Xanatizer. Cool. What about code scanning on GitHub? So this was from again earlier this year, September thirtieth. Code scanning is now available. GitHub code scanning is developer first. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, easily find security vulnerabilities before they reach production. We are thrilled to announce general available of code general availability of code scanning. You can enable it in your public repository today. Cool. All right. And so that's all I got for today. And so I rest my case. And so this is, uh, I rest my case on why static, static analysis tools are very important. And so next week, where next week I'm going to tie in almost everything we've learned, we've done throughout the whole academic year into the one big uh, topic of malware analysis. And we're going to tie it all together. Okay? All right. That's all I got for today. Have a good night. See you next week.